started. Someone asked me um, if I get nervous getting up here, and the answer is no. I've been doing this for a while, until today. I do have a little nervous today. I don't know why. We have a special VIP in the room. My mother-in-law is here. Philadelphia. She graduated from Temple, LaSalle. I took her to California, away from her mother and her family. <laughs> and because this is Philly and it's cold, I hardly ever come here. <laughs> so I took their baby away. <laughs> but I'm nervous because they have never seen me speak live. <laughs> My parents have never seen me speak live. So the very first family member to ever see me speak live, now I've spoken in the United States, I've spoken in Europe, is my mother-in-law. So I want to give her a round of applause. Yeah. All right. You guys learned a lot so far? Yes. yes. I told you on day one, I guarantee when you leave here, you're going to know more than you knew when you came into the door. And that when I leave, I want to leave a piece of me so that you can bring this back to your community. Because this is the greatest economic shift in wealth in the history of mankind for the most amount of people that most people don't even know what's taking place until you tell them. But now we're going to have some fun. We're going to talk about how do you buy Bitcoin, how do you store it, a little bit of security, and we're going to give Bitcoin away. Who wants free Bitcoin? Woo! <laughs> Woo! All right, let's talk about wallets. Cryptocurrency wallets. Now, Bitcoin is decentralized, meaning there is no bank that you're used to putting your, your, your check from work into. You own your money. But you are now responsible for owning your own money. So we're not going back to the days of putting money underneath our mattresses or our pillow. But in essence, we are. Because you have the money in your possession, in your control. Which means, if you lose it, it's lost forever. There is no calling customer service for Bitcoin. There is no tech support. That is why education is so important. So you know what to do. I have friends that have lost dozens of Bitcoin because they can't remember their password. Or they lost their computer. Or they didn't write down their 12 password recovery code. Anybody seen the Big Bang Theory? Yeah. yeah. Last year they did an episode, I think it was in November, December, and the whole episode was about Bitcoin. Sheldon, they had a, a laptop. Years ago they mined Bitcoin, forgot about it. They saw that Bitcoin jumped up like more than $10,000 a coin. They were gonna be rich and they were gonna search for that laptop. And when they finally found it, realized the girlfriend had wiped the laptop clean. Oh. Bitcoin gone forever. In fact, you know when we say there's 21 million Bitcoin that will be ever be in existence? The true number that will be in circulation is close to more 7 to 8 million coins. Ever that will be in circulation. 36 million millionaires and billionaires. They all can't have one full Bitcoin. Which is why every single one of you, I told my mother this. And I jump on her because she's not doing it like she's supposed to. You want to open yourself up a Bitcoin account. Whatever you can afford and whatever you can afford to lose, have a budget that you're putting into your Bitcoin to build your Bitcoin portfolio on a monthly basis. It could be 50 bucks a week. It could be 20 bucks a week, 200 a week, 1,000 a month, whatever it is. Think of it like tithing. But have a budget set aside. I do that more than how much am I putting in my savings account. Mm -hmm. Create that. You get up to one full Bitcoin, stash it away. Even when times get hard, don't sell the Bitcoin. Stash it away. Because what did I show earlier? What did that billionaire say? One day it's going to be worth $1 million per coin. Today it's at $6,300, $6,400 a coin. It's affordable. That's not affordable. You don't need to buy one whole Bitcoin right now. But you can build up to it. You can start with $5, $50. It adds up. So that's one thing you want to start doing. So we're going to talk about wallets. Where you can go to store your Bitcoin. What is a cryptocurrency wallet? Well, it's a software program where Bitcoins are stored. Bitcoin wallets facilitate sending and receiving Bitcoins 
and gives ownership of the Bitcoin balance back to the user. You are the bank. You have full control. Now, the Bitcoin wallet comes in many forms. It comes in a desktop, like your home, your home computer or a laptop. It also comes on mobile devices. You can have wallets on your phone. Also comes on the web, which means there are web-based wallets. Then there are also hardware wallets, physical like flash drive wallets. All of these things can hold Bitcoin, but they all serve a different purpose. So it's important to know these purposes. So it's referred to a wallet because it is a wallet. That's where you have your coins, that's where you stash them, where you keep them. Yes, a hardware wallet is known as a cold storage wallet. So like a device that's a flash drive that you can disconnect from the computer, that's what we call cold storage. There's people that take that type of wallet and they put it into their safety deposit box and forget about it. Can't be hacked at that point. Let's talk about the desktop wallet. Desktop wallets are store, installed on a desktop computer and provide the user with complete control over the wallet. The desktop wallets enable the user to create a Bitcoin address for sending and receiving Bitcoin. So how does this work? Anybody have a PayPal account? Use PayPal or mobile banking. Same type of thing, same process. They also allow the user to store a private key. There's a, there's a difference between a private and a public key. A public key is your wallet address. That's your wallet address, where people are going to be sending you bitcoins to that address. A private key is that nobody else has access to. That's your key to get into your wallet. Private. You don't give that away. Because if you give up your private key, you're giving up access to your bank account. Understand that? So private keys are very important. They can actually be used to restore lost bitcoins. Now let's talk about a mobile wallet on your phone. So you can download phones. So right now, everybody has a cell phone. I want you to go on, in fact, raise your hand right now if you have a bitcoin wallet. I don't know. If you do not have a bitcoin wallet, raise your hand. Look at the room. This is going to be mandatory to survive this century. Go on your Play Store and download an app that's called BRD, the Bread Wallet. Even if you're never going to use it, I already have a wallet, Brandon, that's okay. You want to have multiple wallets. One thing is, you never store all your crypto coins in the same wallet. You have multiple wallets all over the place. I have friends that have hundreds of wallets, $10,000 in each wallet. So download the bread wallet, BRD, because that's where we're going to give away the $500. So a mobile wallet overcomes the handicap of desktop wallets, as the later are fixed in one place. Once you run the app on your smartphone, the wallet can carry out the same functions as a desktop wallet and help you pay directly from your mobile phone from anywhere. Thus, a mobile wallet facilitates in making payments in physical stores by using touch to pay via NFC scanning or a QR code. All right, that's what a mobile wallet does. A web wallet, a web-based wallet, for example, could be Coinbase. It, those are old, CoinJar, you know, uh, Uphold. So that's where most people that first get started go to buy a Bitcoin for the very first time. They set up a Coinbase account because it's easy, it's the most popular, it's the biggest. So what happens, think about it's like uh, if you want to buy Bitcoin, let's say you're going to use Coinbase. You set up your Coinbase, follow the instructions. You can attach your debit card or, or get your debit card or your bank account. Then you're going to buy Bitcoin. It's going to pull it from your bank account, whatever amount you tell it to. Now when you first get started, you're brand new. So you have a limit on how much you can buy per day until they see that you're an established individual, established customer. They also have something called KYC, which is know your customer, which means they're going to ask you questions. Social security number, maybe proof of a bill payment or your, social, or your driver's license, because they have to follow the SEC laws in the United States. So don't be, why do I have to give up?
up my social security number. You got to give it up. That's the law. Now, in the United States, there's tax laws. Now, again, I am not a licensed financial advisor to give financial advice, but I will say this. Pay your taxes. In 2017, only 0.2% of people that had access to Bitcoin reported their earnings. And you might think that you can get away with it because the IRS doesn't know that you own Bitcoin. But let me tell you something about the government. At the end of the day, the house always wins. They are developing software and hiring companies like Chainalysis to be able to track Bitcoin addresses. Because a Bitcoin address is anonymous. It's just an address. It doesn't have your name attached to it. But if you start trading with exchanges that are compliant with the United States laws, they're telling the IRS who owns this wallet. And they're going to match it up and say, oh, wait, we got records that you made $70,000 of Bitcoin and you reported maybe $2,000 worth. And they will go back on you three, four years. You might think you got away with it. That's why Dave Chattel had to run off to uh, South Africa. <laughs> and then Wesley Snipes. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't looking for Wakanda now. All right? So since I'm being recorded, and I'm, I'm very careful of what I say, Pay your taxes. I want to make sure I'm on record saying that. Record, report. So, anyways, you got to go through the KYC and AML, anti-money laundering laws in the United States. So, just follow, follow the, uh, the the directions. Keeping your wallet safe is very crucial. So, some safeguards include encrypting the wallet with a strong password. Don't use the same password you use for everything else, because if a hacker can get in on one of your old systems or on something else and you use the same password, you better be sure if they see any activity on your computer dealing with crypto, they're going to use that for everything. Get us for everything. Never write your passwords in your computer. You know, people, well, I'm just saving on a document on my computer. Well, if a hacker gets into your computer, they now can get your passwords. Write it down and put it somewhere in a safe or somewhere in your home. We have one woman. Freak out, it's 2017. She had, I think, $8,000 worth of Bitcoin. And which wallet was it? I think it was the Exodus wallet. One, she forgot her password. The second thing, there's a 12-digit recovery code that you have. They tell you to write down. She wrote it down. And she lost where she put it. So she lost her password. She lost her recovery, 12 digits. And she's screaming bloody murder, where's my $8,000? And then it's gone. She had full control over that. Mm -hmm. So she said, Bitcoin's a scam. They stole my oh, money, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Even though she admits, yeah, I didn't follow the procedures. So this is very important. Is that you are your Fort Knox. So don't use the same password you use for your email. Email address, everybody, most people have a Yahoo, a Hotmail, a Gmail account. I advise using an encrypted account email address for anything dealing with crypto. One good one is ProtonMail. ProtonMail.com. It's free. They have, if you pay, there's an even higher security to it. But use that because it's more encrypted than Gmail. The reason why you don't want to use Gmail is because Gmail, in the name of being consumer friendly, they record all the websites you've been to. They, you can even have it set up to record your passwords. You don't have to remember your passwords. You can be on multiple devices, and as long as you log into Google, it's still re it's, it, 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 everything transfers over no matter what device. Hackers know this. So you know what happened? You guys know, yeah, I'm calling him out, Jairus Coleman, my partner. I know he's probably watching. We'll watch the recording. He used him as an example. Jairus, somebody pretended to be him, called his cell phone provider, <coughs> got access to the SIM card, once he had access to the SIM card, he had access to Jarrett's Google account. Once he had access to his Google account, he had access to all the websites Jarrett visited, which is his crypto accounts. And they were able to take Bitcoin from him, or I think it was Litecoin or something they stole from him, because they called the, the cell phone company. Do you want to trust your security and somebody that's paid minimum wage to do mm -hmm. telemarketing to answer questions? They didn't follow the procedure. They just gave up all his information. So
So you don't want to have your accounts tied to your Google. And I'm going to go over a little bit more security than I'm going to these wallets here. What was the name of the name? <coughs> Protonmail.com. Now understand, nothing is ever 100% secure. It's impossible. But what you can do is make sure that there's multiple layer, layers that they have to jump through to get to your stuff. Also, we don't go, we didn't go through this today, but it is in our KGX training. 2FA, two-factor authenticator. Anytime a website that you're on is offering that, use it. So it's just apps. I'll give you some more apps. You might write this down. You don't have to download it right now. So I'm going to give you some apps that you should. Well, I just got a message from Jairus. Somebody Facebook in line? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's a couple of. Uh, let's see here. So you got the bread. You guys download the bread wallet? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You want to download something called Google Authenticator. Google Authenticator. Okay, that's one. You'll learn more about this later. Another one is Authent, uh, it's pronounced A-U-T-H-Y. It's another authenticator that different wallets use. A-U-T-H-Y, Authy. Another one is Coin Market Cap. Especially if you're not a trader, you don't understand how to trade, but you want to know what the markets are doing. Coin market cap shows you the top 100 coins, and you're able to see daily what the price is and how it's changing, going up or down. You guys listen to my crypto talks, so you hear me talk about this all the time. You want to download a crypto calculator, it doesn't matter anymore. So you can learn how to convert, like how much, if I have $500, how much is that in Bitcoin? So you let's say let's I'll do that right now. Pull it up. So five hundred dollars is point zero seven seven zero four zero four two Bitcoin. Better get used to knowing those type of digits. Mm -hmm. You know, in school they teach us as kids <coughs> uh, a penny, five, a nickel, a dime. How many? How is two dimes worth? As kids we learn that, so we learn the decimal points of money. This is new money. We're gonna need to know. That 0 .004 Satoshis is worth what? 0 .01 Satoshi is worth what? You know, you're going to be in the doctor's office somewhere. How much is that bill? 0 .045 Satoshi. Huh? <laughs> Let me get my calculator out here. So this helps you to know this. You do it enough, then I already know. When I see 0 .2 or 0 .4 Satoshi, I know how much Bitcoin that is in U.S. dollars. Because the rest of the world has had their own conversions in their currency for the pound, the euro, the yen, the naira, in different countries. But it all goes back to Bitcoin is the same, no matter what. So that's a good app. Uh, let's see, anything else that's major? No, nah, other stuff you can learn later. And those are some good apps you want to have on your phone. All right. Steve, yes? What was that last thing you just said as far as what you were just talking about? Coin market cap. It looks like a yellow big C. And the website is coinmarketcap.com. But coinmarketcap is the app. All right, cold storage wallets. Bitcoin wallets are also available that keep you in your home, office, or vault. These are hardware wallets. These are most commonly referred to as cold storage wallets. They are unique in that as long as you keep up with your keys, numbers assigned to the Bitcoin when you load them on the wallet, you can actually retrieve your Bitcoin if you lose the wallet. You will learn more about this in future trainings. Let me say this in slim because we never say this all day. KGS is an educational platform for analyzing, learning, and discussing general and generic information. It is not a broker dealer nor an investment advisor, and the site operators or authors have, ac have no access to non-public information about publicly traded companies, ICOs, or cryptocurrency coins. Now, a little bit of security, because this is important. When I travel, or if you come from network marketing, you know how it is when you're trying to advertise and somebody starts making money and they want to buy a new car and stand in front of their car and make pic take pictures show their lifestyle on vacation, show the big house, I'm balling, whatnot, join my team, you can make money like me. 
This is crypto. You do not want to do that. You do not want to advertise what you have because you make yourself a target. Mm -hmm. Hasn't happened too much in the United States, but it is very big in Europe, Asia, and Russia where people get kidnapped because they know you're keeping your private keys in your home somewhere mm -hmm. or for ransom. This has happened many times. So when I travel, I don't have on a big shirt saying Bitcoin branded in the house. <laughs> I don't have my hat. I don't have a laptop with stickers all over it advertising crypto stuff. When I travel, I either have a hoodie, sunglasses, and my headphones on, and I go to sleep, don't talk to me, don't bother me. And it goes against what we were taught in network marketing with that two-foot rule. If anybody's breathing, they can be a customer. I don't do that. That's only my own person because of security factors. When I travel, I never use public Wi-Fi to look up any of my Bitcoin accounts. I was shocked when I went to London and I was in the Bitcoin convention and everybody had their laptops out. They had this big sign saying the Wi-Fi uh, code so everybody could use the public Wi-Fi. Especially when people travel because if you don't set up an alert on your phone to set it up, you know, that, that when my wife and I took a cruise, we went to uh, Greece and Italy, and the moment we got off the boat, the first restaurant we all ate at was whichever had the biggest signs talking about free Wi-Fi. Is that me? Okay. So the first place we would stop is whatever place said free Wi-Fi. So everybody's running over there so they can check their, their accounts and their social media, call their friends and family, because you can't get it on the boat unless you want to pay an arm and a leg. Problem with public Wi-Fi is hackers know that as well. Yeah. And they have their own equipment that can plug into anyone that's using the public Wi-Fi. Uh, Starbucks already got in trouble because some Starbucks branches figured out how to use people who have their laptops out that's using the public Wi-Fi, and they started using those computers to mine coins. I forgot which, it wasn't Bitcoin they were mining. They were mining another coin using your laptop that was open. And people didn't even know that, that was going on. When I go to Starbucks, I just bought my Bitcoin mobile, and it has its own um, Wi-Fi in the car. It's like 100 feet away. So I can connect to it in a, while I'm in Starbucks without having to use public Wi-Fi. Never travel with your main computer that you do conduct your, your uh, crypto business on. I travel with my backup computer. Never mind my email. Now, I'm even thinking I was turned on to I may not start traveling with my regular phone. I'll travel with a burner phone. Mm -hmm. When you travel internationally, you gotta go through customs. Mm -hmm. They're now starting to ask this question because you can't travel with more than $10,000 cash on you. So, they're now recognizing Bitcoin as real money. What if you had your ledger wallet, you had your laptop, you had your phone, you've got 20 or $30,000 mm -hmm. worth of Bitcoin on you. They will pull you aside and start asking you questions and, and confiscate your stuff because you are in violation and you're breaking their law. You don't want to go through that process. So when I when I go overseas and they say, you know, why are you here? What are you business for? I'm here for business. What type of business? Consulting. I'm not saying I'm here for a blockchain event or a blockchain expo. Oh, so you got some Bitcoin on you? <laughs> what am I gonna say? No. And I do. But now I don't travel with Bitcoin. You can now you can always access. This is why you want to have different wallets. Different wallets do different things, but they also have their pros and their cons. Our training and education is going to teach you all this. I can't do it all in one sitting right here. All I can do is expose you so that you can be prepared. So this is the value of what we offer: security first, protect your money. Yeah. I've seen pictures of, of the Bitcoin coin. I mean. Does anybody ever walk around with Bitcoin, or is it, or is this all, it's all digital, right? Yeah, it, there is no physical Bitcoin. So a Bitcoin coin is somebody that just made a coin up that has a Bitcoin symbol on it, okay. just represent Bitcoin. I got some Bitcoin. It's a souvenir. It mean, it, it's worth nothing. It's <laughs> only worth whatever it was printed on, whatever gold, whatever. So there's no, you will never see, if somebody says, yeah, I got some Bitcoin in my bag. <laughs> No, they don't. <laughs> no, they pull out. I got Bitcoin. It's selling right now for sixty-four hundred. You can get it from me for five thousand right now. They, don't fall for that. All right. There is no physical. This is all digital. 
All right, so security first. Make sure you got multiple wallets. It's a simple way to buy Bitcoin. And then how you sell it. Well, when you're ready to sell it, you can now pull it back into your wallet, uh, your bank account. Coinbase does that, Uphold does that, different ways. There's even a, a, a card called BitPay. Mm -hmm. So you can register at BitPay, I don't know if it's BitPay.com or what, and you're gonna get a Visa card, BitPay card. Mine is at home, I didn't travel with it. Because again, I don't like if my card wallet got stolen. You know, just a real quick side story, none of this room would have happened here. For more than 60 days ago, I traveled to Chicago from Ontario Airport. And I was 40 minutes before boarding my plane, and I noticed I didn't have my wallet. And I start freaking out. <laughs> all my stuff, all, everything's there. I can't get on that plane without my wallet. And I go back to screening, and I'm looking for, they're like, what are you doing? I said, my wallet, my wallet's gone. So after looking everywhere, they don't see it, they pull up the security cameras, and they backtrack it for when I go through. Because I remember I pulled it out, stuck it on the bin. They had a hold up and somebody ahead, they could see it go through security, and he walked up to my bin and just took my wallet, put it in his pocket, and walked away. Oh, but wow. they saw who did it. So now they're pulling up all the cameras to track this guy. While doing that over the PA system, so it says, uh, will a Brandon ID come to gate eight, please? We have your items, a Brandon ID. So I go over to the gate, they had my wallet, everything was in it, the money was in it, the cars were in it, and they said, yeah, some guy just walked up and said he picked up a wallet by accident or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> when you look at the video footage, it's weird because it's not like he accidentally, he just did it. <laughs> Maybe and he it, it But I don't know if he had to change a heart or he realized he wasn't going to get away with it or he saw all the commotion going on, but he turned it in. <laughs> but if I didn't get that wallet in that first 30 minutes, I would not have gotten on that plane. Which meant I would not have been in Chicago, which meant Diana would not have been in the room listening to me do a Bitcoin boot camp that she never came up to me, so I didn't even know she was there, which meant she would not have joined KGX, I would not be here today, wow. and you guys would be a part of this. Wow. 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 <laughs> You've got to be careful about your security, and when you go to the KGX training, don't just skip through wallets, how to buy Bitcoin. Remember we talked yesterday, those that went to dinner with us, about when you get your green wallets, what to do with the coins once you get them. We've already, I did a whole hour long Facebook Live yesterday, so I don't have time to go through that now, but this education is important so you know these steps. Do you guys see any value in what you've learned so far? Raise your hands. Yes. yes. If you're not in KGX, we've got 45 more lessons that can go into all of this. Someone says, why should I pay for your education? Why can't we just go to YouTube and, and Google and get it for free? I guarantee somebody's going to say that ignorant statement to you. <laughs> why did I go to Morehouse College when I could got, got the same information online for free? Why do people pay all that money for Yale and Duke? Well, they can go online and get the same information for free. You get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. um, and some of that information is not even true and accurate. MSNBC, so-called their crypto desk, when they do reporting on cryptocurrencies in the market, have been proven to be 95% wrong every time they report on Bitcoin. So much so that traders listen to them to do the opposite of what they say. <laughs> and it's been proven 95% wrong. Because by the time they get the news, it's too late. No, I was, we were at the Crypto Invest this week. One guy said, yeah, when I was at Starbucks last year and I heard some average Joe telling his buddy, yeah, yeah, we gotta start buying Bitcoin. He's calling his friends, time to sell. Right. <laughs> Ignorant right. people are getting in it now. Time to sell. <laughs> Education is everything. Education is important. All right, everybody downloaded their wallets, right? Yeah. We're gonna have some fun, we're gonna do a Bitcoin, uh, our, our raffle, and we're going to give away some free Bitcoin. So you guys can leave here with some Bitcoin for the very first time. Yes. What if we don't have our profile though yet? Is it okay to use our regular profile? For now, yeah, but make sure you change it later. But as I close, I want to close by stating this. First and foremost, thank you for being gracious hosts and us coming out to Philly. 
and my concerned mother-in-law wanted to make sure that I was being taken care of. <laughs> and I've taken all of the wrong places. Thank you for that. Thank you for all of you taking your time on this weekend to come out to learn this information. Don't just listen and think that was great information, but go home and apply it. Apply it. And then share with others. The next time I come to Philly, I want to see a room triple the size that we share with. You guys represent this entire city. Give me an excuse to come back out here and bring my wife with me. And she come home. Let, I'll take a couple of questions while we're getting the raffle set up. Anybody have any questions? Where's our tickets? Any questions? Who go authenticate? Any questions? Anybody have any questions? Yes, Leah. Are you working on the airport? How would they know that you own Bitcoin? How would they know? If they if they suspect that you might have something that they consider illegal, they pull you aside. They get you a room, take out all your stuff, they look at your computer, then they're gonna say what's your password to your computer. Now, depending on what country you're on, some is illegal, some is legal, they don't care. Mm -hmm. Because they know you're going to give up your password and we're going to make sure you're going to miss your flight. And you're in a different country. Yeah. So people give up the password they don't want to miss a flight. Mm -hmm. Then deal with the whole happen. We get a lawyer and we call. So once they check your devices, they say, oh, you got some Bitcoin. How much do you have on you? You can't do anything in our country. You can't enter, but we're not going to allow you to leave unless you show us what you got. And then if you do have it, then they say, now you got to pay an extra fine. Because you entered our country, you didn't report your goods or services, you just broke our law. Ignorance of the law does not excuse you of breaking the law. Okay? So for your own safety, for my own safety, I don't travel with nothing crypto. And I'm about to get a burger phone when I travel too. Any other questions? Mr. Mike Boggs is not here. So I can say stuff he can't say. Now I'm going to talk about green for just a quick second. <laughs> you guys remember the numbers? Take one of the keep uh, Facebook on. No. Turn Facebook off. Yeah, turn it off. <laughs> turn it off. This is private. That's fine. I don't worry about the recording. <laughs> Yeah, turn on recordings, everything off.
There you go. Two 
Two one six. Two one six two three four two. Three four two. Somebody won. Two three four two. Thirty seconds. Nobody has two. Two. Two one six two three four two. It's cooking. It's cooking. Oh. Three four two. Just give them all new tickets, guys. Just give them one ticket. 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 Just give them one 
Everybody gets some Bitcoin. Everybody gets some. Let's play open. Come on, we get a lot of you. Come on, get some. You get a coin. Come on, you get a coin. Just give them one. You get this one. Two one six two four five nine. Four five nine. It gotta be one of y'all. Really. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Anywhere in the world, and he decided to take time out of his busy schedule and to come here with us. And he poured so much 
Brandon's was. Um, I feel blessed because I've been hanging out with Brandon since uh, Sunday in LA until Wednesday, and then we're here all the way up until tomorrow. So I feel like um, definitely on behalf of me and my family, because it's definitely me and my family, for some of the life um, changing and just some of the knowledge that he has instilled inside of me is priceless. And of course, you guys know me, I share because I care, and I can't wait to start um, giving it back to some of you guys, some of the things that he shared with me. So on behalf of our Philadelphia team, share with you our, our that, what you've seen is our Bitcoin boot camp. We're going to be doing this all over the country. Next week, if you are November 10th, Mark's going to be in Chicago doing our KHI's training for our Chicago team. I'll be there the following weekend, the 17th, doing another version of the Bitcoin boot camp there. It's going to be maybe 800 people in the room for that event. So if you're flying to Chicago, you're going to have a lot of fun. We have a, we're going to have a KGX booth set up with all KGX gear, clothing, hats. You're gonna to go to our online store, kgxstore.com, and order gear. Then you can wear clothes, hats, all that good stuff. And then we got another big Bitcoin bootcamp that's gonna take place in Seattle in uh, the weekend of January 25th and the 26th. And those of you, who we, who I, I like to say, always invest in yourself. The next blockchain expo, not a KGX event, but a blockchain expo, is in Santa Clara, California, at the end of November, November 28th and 29th. So a lot of you that can get to that, definitely get to that one as well. So again, thank you guys for joining here with us today. Hope you learned something that you can take home and apply it for yourself. Thank you to Mark for taking time out of his schedule, coming down to speak to all of us. Superstars, leading lady for the company. You're going to see uh, and hear a whole lot from her. She's going to be going on tour as well at these Bitcoin boot camps. And we're ready for the next city as well. So I know people want to go to Atlanta, yep. New Orleans, or Orlando, or Tampa. But that depends on you guys. Vegas, you know. Well, Vegas is going to be our convention. And we're looking at that sometime in uh, April. That's going to be our launch. And you haven't seen nothing yet of what KGX is all about. This is the beginning stages. So we appreciate you going on this journey with us. And I want to thank my mother-in-law for coming out with us. Yeah. You guys have a safe travels home. We have people come home in Hawaii, Morocco, wherever you came from, have a safe trip back. And let's start to build our business. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.